Freddie Vatcher's biographer, and I'd like to inform you from time to time about developments in his political career. Freddie Vatcher has just unveiled a new curriculum vitae, an updated curriculum vitae, which is natural since he's just been elected or selected as leader of the United Kingdom Independence Party. I don't know if you remember, but this is the old CV, and this served him well for a long period. It is, in my view, the single most comprehensive and impressive resume of any a political leader of any major political party in Western Europe. It is an outstanding piece of work. This is one of the best qualified political leaders in the West today. But as you can see, he has released an updated version of the curriculum Beatside. And what I'd like to do today is just compare and contrast I want to highlight the key differences between Freddie Vatcher's old CV and his new look resume. The most important change I think here is that whereas previously Freddie described himself as an agnostic supporting Judeo-Christian values, now he says he is agnostic stroke atheist. A bit of a hardening there in the approach. And whereas previously he backed Judeo-Christian values, now he's supporting Christian values, but with the C in Christian lowercase, lowercase c there, and the word Christian put into inverted commas. A very interesting subtle change there. I don't know if Freddie is courting the Sikh or Muslim or Jewish vote. Uh, he's going to need backing from all religions and he's uh, obviously uh, taking a different approach to his what he describes as his faith. As you can see in this section there aren't many important changes except that in the old CV he um, identified the company he worked for, Florensis, uh, but in the new CV he refers to it merely as a Dutch founded uh, company. So I think that's a bit disappointing. I mean, I think Florensis is a well-known multinational conglomerate, uh, horticultural giant in the sector. So I don't see any reason why he shouldn't mention it in the new CV. I don't know, perhaps he, it's Freddie's innate modesty. The other changes here are, are small. He makes clear in the new CV that he is a pioneer in technology, a pioneering uh, software uh, developer and um, as for his work uh, as a trustee of Enterprise Zone syndicates he makes clear that this is in buildings in depressed parts of the UK just in case people were wondering uh, what kind of activity that was it appears to be uh, construction related or property related I see that in the old CV the accountancy firm that Freddie worked for is identified as Chingford based. I should mention Chingford is a most charming uh, suburb of uh, London. And in the old CV, Freddie says that he worked for a, a little accountancy firm there in Chingford. But in the new CV, this is not mentioned. In the new CV, it simply says chartered accountancy practice. But in this section, the most important difference, I think, is concerning the rearing and nurturing of the talent of Joy Thomas, the Einstein of uh, Hindustan. This is the man that Freddie reared up to become one of the premier Indian mathematicians and physicists. Joy Thomas, according to the old CV, secured 100.0% in the school test. Whereas in the new CV, Freddie refers merely to 100%. Old CV, Joy Thomas got 100.0%. New CV, 
Joey Thomas scored 100%. Less precision there in the new CV, but perhaps in the new CV, Freddie feels he needs to address himself more to the layman. I don't know, but I'd be very interested. Are there any physicists or mathematicians watching this on YouTube? If there are, I'd be very, very grateful if you could put a little comment in the section below. Maybe you could help to explain the difference between, in layman's terms, if you don't mind, thanks very much, uh, the difference between 100.0% uh, and 100%. Thanks, I really appreciate that. And now we move on to the question of Freddie's time at Princeton University. If you look at the old CV, uh, he states that he was at Princeton University in 1978 or from 1978, it's not really clear. In the new CV, it is stated uh, that he was at Princeton University 1978, ETS at. Now, let me explain this to you. You see, a lot of people have been writing to me and been saying, look, you're Freddie's biographer. What's going on with the Princeton thing? We don't really, I mean, was he studying at Princeton uh, or, or not? Well, I, I explain as follows. When Freddie wrote 1978, Princeton University, what he meant was that in 1978, he took a test administered by Educational Testing Services called the Graduate Record Examination. The connection with Princeton University is that Educational Testing Services has an office, has its headquarters, in nearby Lawrence Township. It's also in New Jersey. So that, I'm really glad that Freddie provided that clarification there because a lot of people might have thought that he'd actually studied at Princeton University, but actually when he, when he said 1978 Princeton University, what he meant was that he, he took one of these tests, which are run worldwide. Uh, you can do them in Hong Kong, in London, in New Delhi, in Sao Paulo, in Melbourne. So that's that controversy dealt with, I think. Um, I'm glad that Freddie provided that kind of clarification. And then there's the question of Freddie's offers of places at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Harvard College, Stanford University, and the University of California at Los Angeles. Now, um, again, I've had to provide, I had to explain this to a lot of people are puzzled by it. And I'm quite glad that Freddie has provided clarification in the updated CV. This should put this controversy to rest. In the old CV, he says he was offered admission to MIT, Harvard, Stanford and UCLA, but he declined the offers due to a career switch. Well, in the new CV, he clarifies that he took these tests run by a company that has a a headquarters near Princeton uh, called the ETS. He took these ETS tests, did very, very well in them, well enough to qualify for admission to these institutions. You see? So uh, let me explain that again. When Freddie wrote that he was offered admission to MIT, Harvard, Stanford and UCLA, but declined due to a career switch, what he meant was that he did a test once and did very well and did well enough in that test to be able to be admitted to MIT, Harvard, Stanford and UCLA if he had actually applied. You see, that's, that's different. I mean, I think that's a fairly, fairly clear. I don't see, I mean, people are complaining, but I don't, I don't see the problem there. Um, he qualified for MSc Physics admission, okay? You know, if he had applied, he, his ETS scores were so damn good, they, would, they were good enough uh, for him to be able to be considered for admission. A couple of things here 
On the first class honours in physics that Freddie achieved at St Xavier's College, in the old CV he notes that he achieved 100.0% in the practical exam, which is a world record. Whereas in the new CV, he simply calls it a perfect score. It obviously was a score of perfection. Nobody in the whole history of St Xavier's College has ever achieved a perfect score in the final one day practical exam. So, uh, you know, I think he has a right to, to feel pretty proud of that. But there's a, a sort of discrepancy here which may raise a few issues. I'm not sure. He reiterates that he has an IQ of 175. I mean, this is a very, very high-powered intellect that you see in the leader of the United Kingdom Independence Party. He reiterates that he has a, an IQ of 175, and he explains in the old CV that this is well above the 99.999th percentile, whereas in the new CV, it's described as theoretically at the 99.9999th percentile. Two key differences there. In the old CV, he's well above the 99.999th percentile. But in the new CV, theoretically at this percentile. Moreover, in the old CV, there are only five digits, the 99.999th percentile, five digits. New CV, the 99.9999th percentile, six digits, five digits old CV, six digits new CV. Again, I must appeal to the physicists and mathematicians uh, in the YouTube audience here. If you could explain to the layman what this is all about, I would be very, very grateful. A disappointing change here. We have the demise of blackguards and duffers in the new CV, I'm sorry to have to reveal. In the old resume, we got winning against all comers, especially blackguards and duffers in the mainstream media. That's been replaced in the new CV by simply experts in inverted commas. Well, I suppose that's a bit like Christians in inverted commas. I mean, pity really, because I quite like the term blackguards and duffers, and I think the legacy media people are a lot of blackguards and duffers. So I appeal to Freddie to reintroduce the term. But another change is that we've gone from 80 plus percent Pakistani gangs to 70% to 80% Pakistani origin gangs. That's interesting, so he introduced the term origin to make clear that these are British-born rapists. And he's reduced it from 80% to 70 to 80%. Again, I think possibly he's thinking of his Muslim base here. There is a considerable number of men and women of Pakistani origin in the UK who would be prepared to back Freddie. And I think his change of wording, his lower casing of the C in Christian, and his putting of the word Christian in inverted commas, this, this may help him make electoral inroads in the Midlands and the North where there are more Muslim voters. So that's very interesting. He has cranked up the rhetoric a bit against the bogus charities. He refers in the old CV to simply high levels, sometimes concealed of executive pay in registered uh, charities. But he goes all out in the new CV. He refers to fraud, waste, mismanagement and concealed stratospheric levels of executive pay in registered charities. What about Freddie's collection of old 
1965 precision 35 millimeter rangefinder cameras. Well, it appears from the new updated CV that he has sold his collection. And I can well imagine that he got a very reasonable price for it. Um, some of those are old and highly valuable. Now he is engaged only in restoration of the precision 35mm rangefinder cameras. So, I mean, if you ever need one restoring, he's your man. He's watched another 100 movies since he prepared the old CV, the number of films that he has collected. I don't know whether he keeps them in his garage or maybe he has separate storage for them or whatever, but they've gone up from 5,100 to 5,200. In any case, we don't know the media he uses to store and collect these things. 40 plus software manuals in the new CV that he has authored. Just to give you an idea of the scale of his contribution to software development. He likes to liaise with his former students in Boston. There's still a bit of confusion here as to whether he's referring to Boston in the USA or Boston Lynx. I don't know whether he's ever taught in either of those two places. And then earlier there had been a little bit of uh, ambiguity about uh, Cambridge. He, he liaises with his former students in Cambridge. Now, a lot of people thought this was Cambridge, Massachusetts, but actually uh, he clarifies uh, in his new CV that it's Cambridge in the UK. So again, I mean, I don't know whether he was a visiting professor at Cambridge University, this isn't specified. You will remember from Freddie's old CV that he is the author of an important new history of the Third Reich, Nazi Germany. This is available on Amazon. Freddie, I should point out, is a historian as well as a politician. I, I don't know why it is not in the new CV, but it occurs to me that he, possibly he has renamed the work for, us, for the second edition. And maybe he's renamed it, How the Nazis Almost Won. But I don't think so, because his work, Nazi Germany, is about social and cultural nature of the Third Reich, in addition to war history. Whereas this, this seems to be a history of the military campaigns of uh, Adolf Hitler. This is exciting. So How the Nazis Almost Won should be hitting the shelves again and I'm glad by the way that Belgian Congo Holocaust is still mentioned that's really worth getting hold of this section here no major changes just a few uh, figures added 1830 excuse me awards uh, uh, things like that but when we get here it gets interesting Freddie coordinated national leader removal act in 2018 and he reiterates this in the new CV. Whereas in the old CV he made 44 interventions, he explains now that he has totted up over 50 interventions. These leader removal activities, that Freddie was involved in coordinating these important leader removal activities. He was actually a member of the NEC which is the kind of presidium or like the European Commission, this sort of central body. And so no doubt he was driving forward this, uh, these vital leader removal activities. What about the old emails I hear you say? They've gone up. In the old resume, we had 1.5 million emails sent by Freddy Vatcher. Freddy Vatcher has sent more emails than any other political leader, uh, probably globally. I mean, I've heard of no political leader sending more emails out. It has gone up from 1.5 million emails to 1.8 million emails. And these are, moreover, red emails. 1.8 million red emails sent by Freddie Vatcher. In the new CV, 
Freddy pulls no punches when it comes to one or two of his predecessors. Look at this statement here. On becoming party leader, striving to return the party to its decent libertarian roots, undoing reputational damage inflicted upon UKIP by the appalling words, deeds and associations of my recent predecessors. He really puts the knife in there. It just, just goes to show, this is a man of power and he's a, achieved the leadership of a great political party and he has routed all his rivals. If he can achieve this for UKIP, imagine what he can do for the country as Prime Minister. And here uh, in the new CV he lists a number of uh, posts that he's held, um, culminating in the leadership 22nd of June 2020 is when he was elected or selected or nominated, I'm not sure. This bit, there's hardly any um, change except that uh, the Secretary of State for Works, a man called Ian Duncan Smith, his seat was safe plus plus in the old resume, but now it's uh, designated only safe plus. This bit here, I'm a bit disappointed about because one of the glories of Freddie's old CV was his anti-Trotskyist campaign that he conducted in Backwoods, Michigan, in the USA. Unfortunately, he's changed the wording, and I don't know why, but the anti-neocon and anti-Trotskyite aspect has been expunged. Look here at the old CV. It states, ran an informal, independent, anti-neocon, anti-Trotskyist campaign in Backwoods, Michigan, USA, for their presidential election. Well, in the new CV, it, he simply says, I ran an informal, independent political campaign in the US presidential election. Uh, no mention of the anti-Trotskyist uh, effort, which I think was so laudable, and which won so many plaudits in so many quarters. So, But again, you know, with Freddie, <laughs> It's a mixture of modesty. Maybe he wanted other people to get the credit for those anti-communist efforts. Um, he, you know, he's a great guy. He, he doesn't want to arrogate to himself all the glory. And that is, you know, a true leader knows how to give other people a chance. Uh, allow other people a, a, an opportunity to stand in the limelight. Uh, he doesn't hog the limelight. He's, He's a wonderful guy, actually, Freddie is. Um, and he uh, concludes, I have a history of pseudonymous online activism for worthy public interest causes. And I think that's the word, uh, worthy, that perhaps best describes Freddie. He is a worthy politician and for UKIP. He is a worthy leader.